from you shortly. And the idea of using a microphone is not just for us in here, but it's for the people out there in, in that world of ether who need to know what we're saying and can hear us loud and clear. So please use your microphone judiciously during this meeting. Um, it's going to be a long meeting if we make it long, or otherwise it'll be a nice short meeting. But I'm very pleased that some of the members were collaborative and speaking to me prior to this meeting. So hopefully we've sorted out a few of the little rough edges and we look forward to another very good community board meeting. Now, I'd like to ask Robin, if you'd please say the katakia for us today before I declare the meeting. Oh, I'll de First of all, I'll declare the meeting open and ask those who wish to stand to stand and those who don't wish to stand remain seated, please, for the katakia. Ena tohu o, o mato atua, o te rangi, o te whenua. He aere takina i a moto i ne take e firifiri ai i tēne wā. I raro ano i te aro aro a ranganui ki runga o papa tuanuku a e tako nei. Whaka mō ai ki a tīna, humie, huie, tae kie. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Sinclair and Councillor Rebel. Okay, item 1.2. Do we, we don't have, obviously have any apologies because all around the table. Anybody who needs a leave of absence? as we're going to give you almost six weeks, eight weeks off very shortly. So try and make your breaks and holidays during that period of time and you can come back on the 25th of January. <laughs> no. No. So there being none, <clears throat> we'll move on to public forum. One Item 1.3, public forum. We have one speaker in the public Forum. Virginia Clay, would you like to come forward, please, to the centre of the room and bring your artwork with you? Please. That gentleman, that old, that gentleman will help you there. Good morning, community board members. Good morning, Adrian. I've come about the Kopu Bridge Roundabout. It divides public opinion as to whether it is just disappointing or an eyesore. I don't think it has to be either. And I want to present to you my design, which is not to scale. It's anyway, it incorporates motives that are local. It is, will be relatively cheap to build. It will be very cheap to maintain. Um, and I think it will represent Thames Coromandel very well. It includes a number of local interests. And if you can see it, the idea is the base is concrete, coloured blue. The big rocks, ideally, I would like to get them from a local quarry and our, our former mayor might be obliging about that because it's just up the road and he has the equipment. However, a uh, person over there, nice curry dress, has suggested to me that Wakako Kotari is absolutely against any kind of lumps. So I would suggest that these natural rocks which surround us in the peninsula could be replaced, but I think this would be wrong, by fiberglass ones which you can lift like that. So that should anyone be foolish enough to drive over the roundabout, no harm will be done except squashing the rocks. I have consulted with a, a lifelong truck driver about this issue and he looked at it and he said he couldn't see a problem and we went out and we looked at it from all directions and my design will not obscure any of the signage. 
there is plenty of room in actual fact for a truck to miss it. However, as I say, fiberglass is an option. Now, the big rocks from the quarry, hopefully. The small white rocks I would like to be collected by children around the peninsula to involve the schools. If we can't get enough pure white ones, we'll just paint them. The koru shapes of course, represent uh, the Tamas of Fenua. And on the blue background, they also represent the waves of the coast. This is all about our place. What do we have? We have the sea, we have the coast, we have the rocks, but we also have this little item in the middle, which is a pierced blade paddle, which I think would be a nice adjunct. If you hit it, you hit it. And I would like it to be carved by a local carver with the cooperation of the local iwi and then cast in bronze. Ideally, I would like it to be cast at A&G Price, but I don't do think they do art castings there. However, I have a friend in Auckland who's got a foundry. She cast um, Michael Owen's, oh, making the touchdown at Eden Park and is very skilled. She has her own foundry. She also did far lap galloping. She's also done a life-size elephant. She's very talented. Um, so that'll make it easy. So if, if we get the rocks from the quarry, quarry, the small rocks from the coast, and that cast, and depending, I might even front up for the cost of casting it, because I can. Anyway, there we are. That's my presentation. Please, ladies and gentlemen, feel free to look at it. Thank you very much. Um, I'll ask uh, board members if they wish to have, have any questions. We have one away from Councillor Rebel. Um, could I take a photo of it to circulate yeah. to the community board members? Please do. Thank you. I'll put these things so in memoir. Here we go. Just while you were talking there before, and you mentioned that that lady carved a life size elephant, you said? Yes, it's in Brisbane. Board Library. member Rockwell's head shot straight up when you mentioned that life size yeah, elephant. Yeah. She did the, it's from it, Brisbane history, I think. And there's a lady in the street with a dog and Napier. She cast that. Uh, Michael Owens, you know, the scoring the try at Eden Park. Oh. That was very hard. Michael Jones. Michael Jones, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, because it, it lands all on one point. It's an amazing piece of engineering. This is a, I've got several small bronzes of hers, and this would be just a piece of cake and wouldn't cost the earth. We're mates. Um, I think, as I say, it would suit. If there's objection, we can have fiberglass rocks which you can lift. In fact, we could all pass one round the council. They're so nice. Member, Member Johnson wishes to ask you a question. Oh, yes. Sorry. Thank you. Hi. Um, uh, can we get in touch after this? Because I have some ideas about uh, funding okay. and um, getting it over the line. So please do. Already um, I'll write my. What about? And I have a plan. So that would be my really details good and yeah. leave it at the desk downstairs. Would that be OK? It'd be great. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I welcome. Um, I welcome all suggestions, of course, but also remember I'm an artist. The moustache on the Mona Lisa is not going to fly. Mm. Mm. So it, that's where I'm coming from. I'm not an engineer, but as far as I can see, I could work out. It's it's concrete, for goodness sake. Mm. You know, I can work out volumes of concrete with a concrete company. It's not rocket science. The only thing I need is the correct diameter of the roundabout. And I didn't go and get it because it was dangerous. I think that sums up oh. my views. Would Thank you, you very like, much. Would you like me to leave it on the table? Uh, that we, we'll, we'll probably not on that table over there, maybe, because there's other speakers coming up after you. Oh, okay. Leave it so, on this table? No, that that um, that oh, table. Mark, okay. Oh, Peter, let Martin, your leg of your... Right. Oh, sorry. Pardon? Board member Rockwell. Sorry. It's very good concepts. I really like it. Yeah. Do you have any option for Cape Sea Roundwater? 
will have to prove that one. KFC roundabout. KFC roundabout. Do you have any options? Oh, for that? right. That oh, would be good. I haven't even thought of that yet. Thank you. <laughs> but, oh, that's the subject for my next project. Thank you. Should the. Yes. Councillor, yeah. So um, I, I have to phrase this as a question. So there will be a question in there. There are, there do appear to be different standards around roundabouts across the country, yes. with some roundabouts being completely open with nothing on them, mm -hmm. others having concrete and lamp posts, mm -hmm. which again are another obstruction. And then there's also some which seem to have quite a bit of vegetation and structure, mm -hmm. which enables people to slow down. So um, yeah, I just wanted to check that. Are you aware that there are a whole lot of different standards? So, oh, yes. mm. generally speaking, I think you see a pile of rocks in the road before you. <laughs> we have had much practice with that round here, and people are really very good at it. And I, I think if they drive over the roundabout and hit a pile of rocks, that's Darwinism at work. <laughs> it's not far to the ambulance station or the hospital, but I think it. My idea is to represent our community. It's right at the entrance. It's right where you come in. There's the guardians on the bridge, and then it all goes into a pile of weeds. And I think that's incredibly sad. Should the community board wish to approve this idea in principle, I would then, of course, contact Waka Kotahi to proceed. And if they say, oh, well, I'll have a day off. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Are uh, there any further questions? No, that's, thank oh. you very much. But um, you, I'm pleased to allude to the fact that it's actually Waka Katahi's roundabout. But um, yes. we all acknowledge the fact that it's an absolute disgrace for the entrance into our town. I think so. So anything we can do to improve that, we will endeavour to do yes. so. And I'm sure that um, our area manager will, will be in contact with you regarding that. Oh, lovely. Okay. Thank you very much. But I just add to that that it's not just the entry to our town, but it's actually the entry to the entire peninsula. So it's um it's even uh, more significant. You're you're right, um, Councillor Rebel. But I left that for the councillors to say because I'm I, we're the, we're the Thames Community Board, not the Thames Commonwealth District Council, as much as we might like to think we are. Thank you. I'm starting grassroots with you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right, we have a moving segment, please, to accept the public forum. Yes. We can have Clay, Luke, Jim, Rucka, Councillor all those opposed, please say aye. Aye. Hello, everyone. Do you want your video played first or do you want to speak? Um, we'll speak first, then I'll give okay. you a no problem. signal. Okay, welcome. The floor is yours. I, I, um, my Tereo is not that great to uh, pronounce the entire name we've got down here, but I'm sure you will. But you remain seated or take a seat or standing, whatever suits. Oh, we could sit. Let's sit. Eh? You have ten. Well, you know, on the same. Okay. Table. You have you have ten minutes. Okay. Kia ora. My name is Jacinda Karaitiana. And uh, yeah. Uh, kia ora. My name is Kijan. Uh, Kijan Paymani. Uh, and I guess the reason why we're here today, we haven't come to ask for anything or um, anything in particular, but over the past two years, we have uh, designed um, and rolled out a youth service, a rangatahi service, a kaupapa Māori service, um, under the banner of Te Kurawai, Haura o Hauraki. And our name is um, Ngāwai Tāpura a Rangatahi, which was a name given to us by Kalani Shelford, um, a local wahine here. And Hauraki. Um, yeah, and I guess our vision or our purpose is to empower young people to um, aspire to be the best versions of themselves, 
um, and to provide spaces and opportunities for them and positive role models um, for them to fulfill those those dreams and aspirations in a nutshell. Um, as part of that journey, we have um, We've got things rolling in terms of normalai, so four day stays at Marae and other programs and schools. <clears throat> but also we we've started to, I guess, acknowledge or appreciate the connections in the community that are needed to make sure that this is successful long term. Hence why we're here to introduce ourselves properly, um, let you know what we do, so that I guess we have the buy-in of and support of other institutions and agencies in our community. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're focusing on networking. Networking, that's kind of, yeah. So that's why we wanted to come and talk to you yeah. guys, show you what we're doing. But maybe we'll show the video and then we can briefly mm. afterwards explain the other things that we do, because this yeah. kind of um, gives you an overview of our normal model. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and Um, I think one thing that I'd really like to point out that is like a point of difference in the way that we work with youth is um, we try to do things from the bottom up rather than the top down. So we try to get the, we look at things like say we get these contracts for health or mental health or whatever, or drug and alcohol, and we don't just keep doing the things that we see aren't working. So we've kind of identified um, those if say if a youth has a drug and alcohol issue, getting them to do their six sessions with a counsellor is probably not going to be effective. So we're not just going to tick boxes because that's what we're told to do. 
So we kind of um, are really big on pushing back on systems and saying this is a way that we know deals with the outcomes, the way that actually fits in for these kids because the kids in our community don't, um, from what they tell us, the way that things are currently in the system don't really work for them. So we just try to fit the mould to what they need and we just roll it out like that. And although it, we do um, things in a te ao Māori lens, they actually work for everybody. These are principles that work across the board. I believe that everybody can come on a noho marae and get something out of it. The community um, sense of relationships between each other um, with the kaimahi, having those relationships with adults. Um, yeah, I think that building relationships with each other, it, it's, it plants these seeds so you're a lot more effective than just having a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Mm. So everything we do is group work, it's group based. Um, we work as a team and we work with a whole team. So I find that more effective than one-on-one -on -one work, which is what I've done previously. Yeah. <clears throat> So I guess just to add, uh, just give a brief overview of sort of everything that we do. Um, obviously, we've, we wear different hats, so you might have seen us in other spaces and, and um, places, but we're here as Waitapara, and as Waitapara, we run Noho Marae. So those are four-day stays at Marae. That's for 13-year-olds and up, um, and we run those in collaboration with our tuakana, our youth mentors. So there's about 15, now there's about 20 of us. Um, and those are young people who have been identified as leaders um, who could fill our shoes when we age out, which we get into that point. Um, and that happens every school holidays. Our leadership program is another core part of our work, succession planning. Um, a lot of, we've witnessed a lot of services and programs fall over once one person leaves. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we had a flow of young people to fill those shoes um, to keep the momentum going. That's our second thing that we do. So we meet with our tour kind of every week. Every week. But we don't even just do stuff with them like there's other kids who might come along. Um, but that's basically just keeping connection and keeping them upskilling mm -hmm. them and that yeah. kind of those kind of fields. And then the last thing would be going into schools. So we talk to different schools all around the peninsula. So even as far as Whangamata and Whitianga, and we talk to the schools, see what the need is, and then we'll work with maybe a group in the school. So we change the schools each term to try to spread ourselves around. Mm -hmm. And that's around delivering um, content on healthy relationships, sexual health, drug and alcohol. Anything I'm missing? It's pretty much And right. physical health. We yeah. do some physical health, traditional Māori games. And we run random events sometimes when we feel like it, like sports days or. <laughs> mm. And movie now, nights. yeah, now being a bit more intentional with networking, building connections. Yeah. Um, you know, being part of networks of other agencies and making sure that we're all, you know, on the same same journey. Um, yeah. That's pretty much, pretty much it, really. Yeah. Board Member Johnson, you want to ask something? Um, not particularly. I just want to thank you for coming in. I mean, it's really, really useful for us to um, hear directly. And the networking thing is, yeah, is what we need to. And, and when we can assist here, yeah, by all means, come back if there are specific items. I know you're not asking for anything today, but, yeah. you know, we're doors always open. It's great. Thanks. Sure. Councillor Rodley. <clears throat> so, I mean, using that rather cliched, ambulance at the bottom of the cliff and the fence at the top but it sounds to me like what you're trying to do is actually be quite a way back from the fence and you're helping people about how to construct the fence but also asking them is the fence the right thing what sort of fence should we build so that um yeah that seems to me a very powerful for it to be rangatahi led because you know they take ownership Sorry, I don't have to mansplain your own process to you, but they, they take the ownership of it and, you know, they can then be the ones stepping into your shoes. And by the way, you're not old. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> but even we've found, like, on our noho marae, um, kids that might have trouble in school, we don't have, we don't really have issues 
a net space. It's like sometimes those kids who I can't believe that they go to school on a naughty and get kicked out of class because they're like little, you know, like when they're engaged in something that works in the way that they like to learn. And I have had like when we've done our workshops before, there's been comments from kids like, imagine if we learnt at school like this, like in a group rather than rope learning on a whiteboard. So yeah, it is cool getting being able to deliver stuff in a way that they'll actually absorb it. That's a rebel. Um, if I heard correctly, you said this you got underway in 2021, end of 2021? End of 2021, yeah. So you we're two years down the track, and just looking at that, it feels like you've got some considerable momentum in what you've done. You've obviously uh, seemed to have really thought through about the way you want to go about doing this, and you're putting legs on it. Yeah. Um, that's impressive, right, in, in that short time frame. I guess my question is... Um, What's the next step? What's the what's the what's the magic wand question? You know, what what is it that you you know, and where are you, where are you going on your next step? I think first and foremost, um, I was also surprised at the amount of momentum we've gained over the past two years. Um, I'm non Māori. I'm not from a Māori family. My dad's from Iran. My mum's um, from England. One thing that I underestimated was the power of the Māori community to mobilise and um, to get things rolling. Um, and that's one thing that I always go back to is like, um, especially in today's day and age, when there's this huge polarised view of, you know, non-Māori, Māori, this and that, the left, the right. But um, what I found really inspiring was the amount of momentum gathered and that I think that is from all of the seeds that have been planted over the past um, decades here in Hauraki. So I owe a lot, well, Waitapara owes a lot to those connections that have been there, that sense of community that's been there for a long time. So that's what I just wanted to mention first. And our old Kaimahi Mahinarangi skipper, whose whānau was all, th all throughout here, man, she, she, she got people just like that and the ball just went and now it's is what it is. The second part of your question, what was that? Or next steps? Next steps would be, at the moment, we've just linked up with a group in Fonga mm. There's a group of, um, they're a church organisation, but we just had a meeting with them yesterday all day. And our next steps, I think, is to help other people grow their own kaupapa in a similar framework with the same, because they've got very aligned principles yeah. with us. So we're kind of trying to help other people just even just look at how you do things from a different lens. You know, like like coming and working here has flipped my thinking on my head because I come from the police. So it's like, <laughs> it's very much like I'm going to tell you how to do things. So it was a lot of adjustment for me. But it's changed my thinking to see that this is actually a way better way of working. So, yeah, the next step <laughs> would be helping other people so that we can do it, spread it further around the farm handle. Yeah. Hey, uh, just for me, for clarification, when we, you came in, when we had the Rangatahi come in, with Tina and that. Are you associated with that group or is it two? This is groups separate, running? but we do work with like MSD, Nazi Maru, but it is a separate co yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you funded through any particular organisation? We all have health contracts under Tikotawai. Um, Excellent. And are you using the facilities in Kirkwood Street? Not yet. Not but yet. you will be? Yep. Will that be your base? Mm. That'll be everyone's base. We want yeah. we don't want to make the youth centre a Tikorawai thing. So we want to get as many people from the community involved in that as possible so that everybody has equal buy-in. But yeah, we will probably use it as well. Yeah, I, I take my hat off to you people. I mean it's amazing what you're doing with the Rangatahi and and I presume that was Mariah Manaya, was yep. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. looked looked like the Kai was a fairly much familiar place to me, but um, it, it's uh, yeah, it, it's a really a fantastic effort you're doing within the community. And I'm, I'm sure the rest of the board say thank you for what you're doing. And as the deputy chair said, we're more than happy for you to keep us up to speed about what you're doing. And if you have any needs or you're finding too much red tape in your bureaucracy around the council, having been coming out of the police, we may be able to ease you through that. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank it's you. fantastic. Great effort. Thank you. All right.
Thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much. I'm happy to move that we receive that deputation, Adrian. Your pardon? I'm happy to move that we receive that. You're right. Did we going to move that? Yep, so it's okay. by Sinclair and George. Excellent. All right, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those against? Carried. All right. Just a, just a general reminder, if you are asking questions, I'm sort of jumping the gun and looking at little red lights around the table. You may not have... You may not have turned off your microphone. Please comment through the chair rather than directly just to keep some sort of protocol going. It makes it a little bit easier all around, particularly people out there who are watching and not sure what's happening and who's speaking. And I just recall being at a briefing session at council where it became very disorganised when people didn't know who was speaking. Thanks, team. Um, items not on the agenda. Anybody want to add any items today? Mm -hmm. Do I? Oh, chair's report. <laughs> it's already on the agenda. All oh, right. What What are you suggesting? It's no items. Oh, no items. Oh, that's a tease on the last one. Does anybody have a conflict of interest? Oh, this is this is sanitised. This is our community board, isn't it? Right. Minutes for confirmation. The minutes I'll take as read. You would have gone through and read the minutes as in your. Attachment A in the order paper. Oh, yes. Um, I, re I realise the the um, all we're doing is um, okaying the minutes, but I wondered if, Rose, we might be able to um, have a conversation briefly about that, um, the item that was raised in public forum around David McLean up on um, Waitahi Road, if we were able to get an update on anything that might have happened with that. For this year, we can do that in the action schedule. Thank you. Excellent. Oh, well done. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll confirm the minutes as, as being true and correct and then moved move by Member Johnson, second by Member Rakwa. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against declared character. And any matters arising out of the minutes or corrections? No, we do that. Why not? This is no fun. Seriously, it's no fun. How can we let Councillor Rodney get away with this? This is no fun. Seriously, you must be able to, some, there must be things in minutes that you can raise after they've been adopted. No. <laughs> Oh, are we? Well, that's getting exciting now. I, oh, what's the time? Not 10.30, is it? 10.35? 10.30. Pretty sure we can. Okay. So we're going to have um, the Peters come in with his worship the mayor, is that correct? Yes. So are we actually, is this like, we got a break for morning tea, so we'll, we, we'll remain as a board until we hear the presentation. Then we'll. Oh, a break for morning tea? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was not in the pre, pre meeting nuptials. Okay. <laughs> no, we're going to break for morning tea and we'll adjourn back here at 11, half an hour. All right. This is the last minute for the end. <laughs>